In this video, we're going to be looking at the new project structure we'll be using throughout the rest of the semester. So I've pulled today's lecture material. I'm in, going to navigate into lecture 15 and then the testing directory is where I've set up a uh, project that's going to be the, that illustrates the new organization of a C project we'll be using. And we know that LS will list the, the contents of this directory, including the directories which are outlined in green, and then the make file is the only text file here. Um, but there's one other command that get, can help you see an overview of a directory structure. And so I'm going to use the tree uh, command, and I'm going to go three levels deep in my tree. And what this is doing is it's printing out the directory structure uh, of not only the contents of this directory, but also its children and grandchildren. And if we just take a quick walk through, what are we seeing here? Well, we see that we've got a make file. We'll take a look at that in a minute, but this will build our project and carry out some other common development commands. In source, we see we've got a main.c. That's gonna be the C file that's gonna contain our main function. And then we're working on, in this project, a library function called copy. And what copy is gonna do, and what will be the purpose of today's exercise, is we're gonna be able to give the copy function a uh, destination memory address and a source memory address. Both of these will be pointers uh, to any location in memory. And then a number of bytes we wanna copy from the source to the destination. And we can see that because we're gonna break this uh, project into multiple files, we've got a directory named include, and this is a conventional name for where a project would put its header file. So the include directory has where the header files are. Uh, you're going to see the support directory, and we're not going to spend much time talking about this. You can tinker around in it and look at it if you'd like. Uh, but there's just some glue code uh, in here that is some scripting that, that makes this project setup a little bit nicer to use and cleans up some of the other directories uh, so that the, the details of some of what we're doing on the testing side of things are a little less um, in your face than they would be otherwise. Right? We'll, we'll talk about this later in the semester. Uh, the other important uh, directory st structure that we'll see is this test directory structure. And we'll see that we've got two kinds of tests we can um, uh, run in our program. We've got integration tests. And integration tests we'll see are a kind of test that run the entire program in feed it some inputs, check its outputs as, a, as an entire program, not li really looking inside of it. And then unit tests are for testing units of functionality within a program. And so these are tests that we could write to test a specific function or a specific uh, parts of our project. And you'll see that we've got a copy file here. Uh, it's a unit test. And uh, in an interesting change of events, we've got a, an extension that's CPP, which means this is actually a C++ file. Uh, because we're using Google's unit test framework here. Uh, Google's unit test framework is written to work for both C++ and C. Uh, the good news is the, the way that we'll be writing unit tests this semester, the fact that this is C++ really doesn't impact us at all. Uh, we'll be writing code that looks no different than we would write if it were just plain C. Right? And so this is a directory structure that gives us um, uh, some... Uh, the ability to build and run unit tests on our code, right? So the make file that will be in our projects by default is a little bit less trivial than the ones that we built in class. Uh, and if we were to look at that really quickly, we'll see that there are a lot of variables that are set up in it. Uh, and later in the semester, we might spend some more time digging into what's going on here. Uh, but then there are some rules and one of the rules that I want to point out is this help rule, which is a phony rule. And with help, it, it gives us some output that uh, we can use to see what are the things we can do with this make file. So without spending any more time looking at this, let's just try running make help. And what you'll see are there are some goals that we can run. Uh, we can build the project, we can run the project, we can run our tests, uh, we can set up a GDB process, we can check for memory leaks, we can clean up our built projects and so forth, right? And so uh, let's just try make run and see what happens. So notice that when I ran make run, we built the object files for both the copy.c file and main.c, and we built uh, a program uh, 
uh, that was named Lecture 15 Testing. And notice that this program was built to a build directory, and then within that build directory, a, bin or a binary directory, right? So this is where our executables are going to be. And so the file that we could run is Lecture 15 Testing, right? And that project or that file was actually run and we saw that the output was source hello world and the destination, we haven't really implemented this project yet. So there's, there's nothing in the destination. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out from this output that we'll see in just a second is notice that the output of our object files is in the build obj folder, right? So I'm gonna use that tree command one more time. And you'll notice that now we have this build directory and in build is where our binary is being built. This is our actual program. And this is where our object files are, are being built. And all of this is taken care of automatically for you uh, just by virtue of, of this make file that's being provided uh, moving forward in the semester, okay? Uh, the other command that we can run is say make test. And a lot of commands you're going to see show up on your screen uh, in the process of, of compiling the, the tests and running the tests. The first time you uh, make your tests, we're having to download the Google test framework from GitHub into our build directory and compile uh, Google test, uh, which takes some time and takes a number of steps. In As you're working on the project, uh, in projects moving forward. Uh, this, the second and third time you run your test, only the things that need to be compiled and changed will do so, and you won't see quite as much output here. Uh, so the first time you run make test, you'll see that quite a bit is happening to install the Google test framework in our build directory and build it. And now we're building our tests. What we can see is we've got some tests that are running uh, and currently failing. Right? I'm not gonna spend some much time in this video talking about uh, what is it that's failing and, and how do we parse this output. But notice that we, we did just run uh, some unit tests and, and they are failing. Right? There's one other kind of test, integration test. Uh, and that uses a integration, test, integration testing framework called BATS, that is Bash Automated Testing uh, system, I guess. I don't actually remember what the S is for. Uh, and you'll notice that we have just one simple test there, that one passed. Make test typically will run both the unit tests and the integration tests if uh, all the unit tests pass, but it won't try the integration tests if the unit tests don't. We can also run the unit test specifically uh, with make unit tests. Oops, make unit test as I did the first time. Right? And so here we see that that output very quickly because nothing changed, we didn't need to recompile anything and it, and it ran directly. Uh, make leak check is a command that we'll be able to use that runs our program through Valgrind with the leak check full flag. Uh, and if we needed to build anything, it would have done that. And then lastly, make debug, remember, is going to start up a GDB uh, terminal that we could start our program with. Uh, and if I were to list what's happening here, we could see that we're on line eight. Uh, and if I go to the next line and print what is in my source, uh, we can see that. Uh, I need to actually complete that line. And if I print what's in my source, uh, we would see that initially it was garbage, right? I hadn't actually evaluated this line. What it was telling me is the next line was to evaluate would be that one. So when we ran the next command, we initialized our, our uh, character array of uh, named source to be the string hello world, followed by the empty or the null character. Uh, and then when we printed it out after that line completed, we saw that uh, we had hello world. Similarly, if I were to press next and print dust, uh, we would see that it's just uh, an empty uh, array of null characters. So now if we were to look in build, what we would see is there are three directories here. And in the test directory, we can see that there's some space set up for running our integration tests and for our unit tests. And I just wanna show you that in the unit tests, uh, when you get to the point of running a testing framework such as Google's test framework, uh, there are a lot of files that are associated with this in order to build it and, and manage it. 
uh, that we're not going to be too worried about uh, for the purposes of this semester, uh, but you're free to look at any of these things and see that they're there. There's one more rule that we mentioned in class that's worth knowing will exist in our program or our projects that is make clean, right? And so make clean deletes everything that is in our build directory. So all of that infrastructure we just downloaded to set up Google tests, uh, we just deleted. And this can be handy if for some reason you're seeing some unexpected error in, in building your tests or running your tests or something's not getting picked up. Uh, when in doubt, clean your build directory and just try building it from scratch again. And that tends to do the trick, right? So I could make run again and we'll see that it's gonna build all of that uh, automatically for me. So these are the primary things we can do in our project via the make file moving forward. And as we're working on projects, the, the key things to remember are that we'll be putting our header files in the include directory and our source code files in the source directory. And then in tests, we're gonna be spending some time looking at unit tests here soon. Uh, and in the next video, we'll actually take a look at what it does a unit test look like in the Google test framework and, and tinker around with that.